Every news story has a source, a point of origin. And when it comes to the gospel, the Christian view is that the source is God. Now, a lot of people uh, think that the whole issue of, of God is irrelevant and uh, nothing really to, to do with them or to do with daily life. But really, there's nothing more relevant than the whole issue of God. Either God exists or he doesn't. And both of those options have massive, massive ramifications and relevance for all of us. Is there a purpose to life? Is there a value on human beings? Is there meaning in my suffering? Is there hope beyond the grave? The existence of God is key to all of these questions. And so every one of us should really think about this, this whole issue of is there a God? What's he like? And how can I know him? When it comes to knowing whether there's a God or not, some people think that's an impossible thing. You just can't know. You either take it on blind faith or you don't. But the evidence of God's existence, I think, is all around us. Even, even the very act of thinking about it, the process of reasoning, shows to us that we are not just physical beings acting according to the laws of physics and chemistry. If there were no God, then everything in the universe is merely physical, acting according to physical law, which would mean that rationality and reason would be impossible. So the very fact that we can think about these things, rationality and reason itself points to the existence of God. God has revealed himself. He's revealed himself in creation. Uh, here we are in a universe that did not always exist, a universe that came into existence. And of course, whatever begins to exist must have a cause. Things don't just pop into existence out of nothing without a cause. If something begins, there had to be a cause for it. And whatever caused the universe can't be something within the universe. Uh, so not only do we have the, the origin of the universe pointing to God, but the order of the universe. This universe is finely tuned, its physical constants and quantities. Uh, if they were the slightest bit different, there would be no universe. And it points not only to a powerful creator, but an intelligent designer. So God has revealed himself in creation. A strong case can be made that God has revealed himself in scripture. The Bible claims to be the Word of God, and I think there's a lot of evidence to back up that claim. For example, the Bible is the only so-called holy book that actually deals in predictive prophecy. And there are loads of these prophecies that we can examine and see that, yes, they predicted the events, they predated the events. These were things the writers couldn't naturally have known. Luckily have guessed, cleverly have anticipated, somehow manipulated. And uh, that stands as, as uh, proof that what they said is true, that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Also, he's revealed himself supremely in, in Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus claimed to be more than just a mere man. He wasn't just a prophet pointing to God, but he claimed to be the God that the prophets pointed to. Those were massive claims for a man to make, to be equal with God, worthy of worship, the one on whom people's eternal destiny hinged. They were massive claims, and he backed up those claims by his resurrection from the dead. So. If Jesus Christ is who he claimed to be, then the question is settled. God exists. God has come to us. Because God has come to us, we can come to him. So, so we're not left just to guess or speculate what God is like. When you look at Jesus Christ, all the questions are answered 
all the guessing stops. He has shown us that God exists, that God cares, that God wants to know us. The question of who created the Creator has a, a fallacy kind of embedded in it, that uh, everything must be created, but that, that puts you on an infinite regress because whoever created the Creator, who created him, who created that, who created that, and backwards you go to infinity. There has to be a first cause. And what the Bible presents is that that first cause is God. It says, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And uh, because God is outside of this universe, because he is not a physical being, he's spaceless, he's timeless, uh, he, he is, is self-sufficient, he required no creator. He is the first cause. He's the one who uh, brought everything into existence. Everything depends on him. He's dependent on nothing else. God has always existed in relationship, in community. The Father and Son loving each other in the unity of the Spirit. And God has expressed his love to us in giving his Son pay for our sin by the sacrifice of himself. And when we receive that, that gift of salvation, God then gives us his spirit to bring us into the enjoyment of that relationship that God has always enjoyed within his own being. So by the spirit of God, we know and enjoy God's love. Uh, the spirit of God opens our eyes to uh, be able to appreciate things that we couldn't have appreciated before. When someone embraces Christ as Savior, they receive God's Spirit, and the Bible describes that as being born again. You get new life. You actually share in God's life, which explains the, the transformation that people experience when they come to Christ for salvation. A lot of people have the, the fear, well, I couldn't be a Christian. I couldn't live the Christian life. I couldn't do what Christians do. Uh, reading the Bible and praying and worshiping and meeting with Christians, that's just not my kind of thing. But, but the thing is, it, it's nobody's kind of thing. Nobody's naturally interested in those things. Before I was a Christian, those things were as, as dull as ditch water to me. But when I trusted Christ as my Savior, as my forgiver, what I then found is I now have an appetite for things that once I had no appetite for and an ability to do things that once I had no ability to, to do. And the, the reason for that was I had received God's Spirit. I had a new life within, a new power, uh, new, new desires, new ambitions.